What's up, FOA squad? I'm Anthony, and welcome to our channel, Like with Anthony. I hope you guys are doing well out there. Happy Friday to you guys. I have a lot to share with you guys today. A lot of you in the comments ask, how is Lamont doing? So I'm going to give you guys an update on how he is doing. I'm also going to give you guys my three-month review of this Rove Light travel trailer that I bought back in November. In addition to that, I'm going to share with you guys a few things that I must have live in this lifestyle. So we got a lot to cover today. It's basically going to be a sit down video for me today and sharing all of this information with you guys today. But before I get into any of those things, I hope that you guys notice that the subtitles of the videos have changed. I took a poll, uh, not a poll, I asked on the community page, uh, for some ideas of a new for a new subtitle of the videos. Ever since I bought this travel trailer, I changed the videos uh, subtitles to uh, travel trailer living. Uh, I just wasn't feeling that anymore, and um, it's not a very searchable name. Um, and uh, I wanted to change that name and make it more so ser uh, searchable so that. Uh, the FOA community can continue to grow. So again, I took to the community page and asked for some ideas. And if you haven't already noticed, the names, the subtitle of the video changed to My Tiny RV Life. I absolutely love, love, love that name. And it was suggested to me by FOA Tanya McNair. So Tanya, I thank you in the uh, community page and I'm going to thank you here. Thank you so much for that uh, suggestion. I really, really resonate with that name. I feel like that name definitely uh, encompasses the way that my lifestyle is now. Uh, I spend way more time or actually, actually all of my time when I'm at campgrounds at this travel trailer and the minivan is the main purpose of the minivan now is to haul this travel trailer from one destination to the uh, next. But yeah, I feel like that name really, really uh, encompasses the way that I am living this lifestyle now. And it also has two key search words in that title, which is tiny and RV. So once again, Tanya, thank you so much for that suggestion. I really, really like it. And I'm, I even changed my main page uh, photo. It's a picture of the uh, travel trailer and it has my tiny uh, RV life. I am considering changing the entire channel's name to, <clears throat> excuse me. The, uh, I am considering changing the entire channel name to my tiny RV life. I just it just rings to me it just resonates with me so well and I think once again yes life with Anthony you know that encompasses any and everything that goes on in my life but not too much is going on with my life <laughs> I mean <laughs> I am basically uh, at these campgrounds socializing when I want to and I just think that the the my tiny RV life just suits the way that I am living my life right now and I don't foresee too much change in my life in the future <laughs> other than the way I'm doing it now but once again it's just a consideration I haven't made a final decision yet um, but I do really really love that name my tiny RV li uh, life all right so that was that and all right so <clears throat> Now let's move on to, let's talk a little bit about, let me give you guys a little update on uh, Lamont. Um, Lamont is currently, for those of you who do not know, Lamont is my best friend. We have been best friends since teenagers, probably about 40 years right now. Uh, he is currently in uh, Connecticut, which is his hometown, uh, where his family and his kids are. Um, he recently, not recently, but it's been probably, I don't know, a few months now, uh, suffered his third stroke. He had two strokes many years ago. It affected his physical ability as well as his, uh, mental ability a little bit. And he is currently now at a rehabilitation center 
after suffering his third stroke, uh, he had to go there. And um, the only way that I can communicate with him is through his daughter. Um, she has my number uh, because Lamont's phone was taken away from him by his daughter because he was giving his personal information out to uh, scammers and things of that nature. So she uh, took the phone away from him. So she recently went to visit him and she called me while she was there and FaceTimed me with Lamont. He looks the same. He still has that beautiful smile. Um, he, his physical ability, he was sitting down in a chair. His physical ability looks the same to me. He doesn't look like he like gained or lost any weight. He looks the same to me in that department. Um, but the biggest thing that uh, affected him with the third stroke even more was his memory, is his memory. Um, his memory is slowly kind of dissipating, so to speak. I don't want to make it sound like all horrific and everything, but um, I would say that that is probably his biggest challenge right now. Um, I knew that the two first two strokes affected his memory because when we went on the, clue, uh, the cruise, he kept asking me the same question like over and over within an hour. And so I knew something was uh, happening there. Um, I spoke mostly with his daughter, asking her a lot of questions because, you know, Lamont probably don't know the answers to the questions anyway. So, um, she and I talked. I won't share a lot, any of that. But, um, I asked her that if I was to come there and visit Lamont, would he remember that I was there? I asked him when, um, when she handed him the phone and I asked him, D who who am I? You know, do, do he know who I am? And he did. He did know who I uh, who I am. So that was really really comforting to me that he uh, knew who I was. And even if he, even if he forgot, I would have I would have gave him a few choice words, and his memory would have came back. <laughs> his memory would have came back because I would have gave him a few choice words. But yeah. Um, I asked her would he remember if I was there and she said um, she would have to remind him that um, I was there. So it's a sad situation. Lamont is just 55 years old and suffered three strokes and it's sad and we just don't know the hand that we are going to be dealt in life. We just have to, you know, deal with it, adjust to it and try to make it better. But he, he seems very content, you know, whether he is at his kid's house or whether he's at the rehabilitation center, he just seems very, very content at where he is. So with that being said, I don't know how long he will be at that rehabilitation center. I don't know whether, you know, he's going to be there for a lifetime. I don't know if his kids are going to take him out of there and I, I just don't know their thoughts on it but um for now uh he is doing as best as he could can for a person who suffered uh three strokes and i'm just happy that he is still around and fairly fairly you know is aware of his surroundings okay and it's warm in here it's warm in here you know when you shave men when you shave your head and your face and you put the little cream and stuff on, which, whatever you use after the aftershave on, your face feels like 10 times warmer. <laughs> and that's what I'm experiencing right now. I shaved my face and my head today, took a shower and put my little aftershave on. And now it's like, woo, a little bit warm in here. All right, so that's the update on Lamont, and now we're going to switch over to talking about a little bit about uh, this travel trailer that I've had now since November the 28th, and I'm going to share some thoughts on that, but I'm going to reposition you guys so I can stand up and talk about this. Okay, before I get into some my thoughts on this uh, travel trailer here, 
uh, I, I meant to mention early in the video about my leg and how my leg is doing. My leg is coming along a lot better. I had my tennis shoes on today. Um, I walked a little bit yesterday from the trailer to the swimming pool. I hung out at the swimming pool a little bit. So I feel like it's getting better, but I still have to pay a lot of attention to it and make sure that I don't do anything to you know, re-injure it while it's still in its healing process. But um, I need to, well, I need to walk. I mean, I was mentally locked into walking and I miss not being able to go out in the mornings and walk. And I'm glad that I feel that way because it just lets me know that it's something that uh, I am mentally locked in and, you know, ready to get back into doing it. Um, when I do start walking again, which I think I'm going to start walking again in the mornings on Monday, um, I'm not going to walk on the rocks and the different terrains of the campground. I'm going to walk the path that leads out of the campground and then back into the campground because it's all a flat surface. So I will not be going around the campground. I'm just going to be going, taking that main road in and out of the campground to the main highway and then walk back. I will do that several times until I reach my uh, steps. I don't think that I'm going to stop back at 12,000 steps. I think I'm just going to walk that little path twice and however many steps it ends up being, that's where I'm going to stop. I'm not going to overdo it. I also decided that I'm not going to walk every day. I think I overkilled it by walking every single day and not giving my legs any rest. So I'm definitely going to, uh, I'm thinking in my head that I'm probably going to do like a two and one type of walking pattern, walk two days in a row, then rest one day, walk two days and then rest one day. I think that will help. Um, and again, I'm not gonna be walking around this campground until my leg feels 100% better. Uh, walking around the campground on rocks and and then you got the, all different it's like probably three different terrains uh when you're walking around that path so that is my update on my leg i still feel a little a little strain in it but nowhere near as it was uh a few days ago so it's getting better i just have to make sure that i continue to take it easy and not re-injure it. Um, the swelling has gone down as well. Um, I bought a few things that some of you in the comments uh, suggested and I'm expecting those to come today. So I will put this patch on my leg where um, it swelled up a little bit. And I also bought this cream that some uh, one of you suggested. Uh, I don't know, I forget the name. Lidocaine or something like that, lidocaine. I bought some of that that I'm going to put on. And I also took uh, some Motrin IB, ibuprofen. I took that twice, so perhaps that's helping as well. So everything is coming along, you know. Once again, as we age, it just takes much longer to uh, heal, you know. I want to thank everybody for their suggestions and everything and their uh uh, they get wells and, and take it easy comments and everything, but I got really, really restless just laying in bed. Yesterday, I tried to lay in bed all day and it drove me nuts. <laughs> I was like, oh goodness, I got to get up. I got to get up and do something. <laughs> all right, so that is my update on my leg. All right, so let's talk about this trailer. This trailer, which I have now had for a little over three months. I bought this trailer, uh, where I picked it up to be mine on November. Where's my napkin? November the 28th. And today is March the, what is today? March the 1st? March the 1st. Happy March to everybody and to all the birthdays, the FOA birthdays that are in March. I have a niece, her birthday is this month and I hope she have a great birthday and all of you as well. All right, so one of the things, let's get into this travel trailer. I'm gonna put my window up. 
All right, let's get into this travel trailer. All right. First thing I want to talk about this travel trailer is this couch right here. This couch. You know how when you're first looking for a travel trailer and you're looking to buy something and you walk into it and, and you know, your thoughts are, oh my God, this looks so nice. You know, it looks so nice. And you're looking at it more on a aesthetic point of view more than a functional point of view. And I think that's what I did uh, with this trailer. But you never know until you have it and you start living in it and being in it on a daily basis how things are actually going to work out for you. And the same thing happened when I bought the minivan kit from in Canada. You know, I thought, oh my God, this is great. I'm gonna have, I'm gonna be more organized. I'm gonna have this. I can, I have a bigger bed to sleep on. And then months afterwards, I did that review for that and told you some things that I discovered that were not working for me. And that's what I'm going to do today. The couch. The couch is not comfortable. It's not comfortable for a long period of sitting. And so if I'm in here and I am I have my table in front of me and my laptop on the table and I'm looking at my Netflix series and I'm watching two or three series in a row, which is an almost an hour uh, each uh, uh, episode, this couch becomes uncomfortable. I have changed positions many times throughout an episode of a show <laughs> and it's just like okay I can't get really really comfortable on the couch it looks great you know it fits the decor of the the travel trailer but I cannot get comfortable on this couch for a long period of time and the bad part about that is it's the only place that I have to sit you know other than being in bed. So um, I don't want to say that I'm disappointed in that. I just feel like, you know, it's, it's not comfortable for a long period of time. It's okay for me to come in here and, and sit and eat my dinner with, on my table and all of that kind of stuff. But I, I'm finding it challenging to sit on this couch for uh, a long period of time without changing my position, my seating position. I, I lay down on it sometimes and put the laptop <laughs> on my lap, <laughs> all kinds of things. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the wood that they have in here. The wood. Now, this company, TLC, TLV, Travel Lights, RV, they, <clears throat> excuse me, they pride themselves on making a light uh, unit a light travel trailer and they have done well and they will talk you will hear them talk about their their Esdell Esdell type flooring which I don't know what that is Esdell type flooring if I remember I will put a picture up here somewhere but don't count on that Esdell type floors and their uh, gel coat tight walls and everything and i'm assuming that all of these products that they built this uh travel trailer with contributes to the lightness of the trailer overall and so the wood in here is very thin i will even go as far as to say that it's it's cheap it's very thin and you know <sighs> uh, i don't know how it will hold out on a long term uh basis or whatever i mean i don't it's not gonna fall apart now let me let me not be too dramatic about it it's not gonna fall apart i, I believe it's going to hold out very well i mean but it just looks you know there's some imperfections in it a little bit i don't know if this is all their units or just the one i bought but you know you got some unpainted wood here and you know it's it's very thin so we'll see how that holds out. Also, and I was told by Adolfo that this happens to all uh, trailers. The doors are starting to squeak when I open them. The cupboard door, cabinet doors are squeaking a little bit. Drives me nuts. I do have some WD-40 that I squirt on there every now and then. All right, what else do I want to share about this? Okay, 
I know my main thoughts, my main thought. Bring it back, Anthony. Because of the way or the material that this trailer is made out of, I noticed something really big to me. And that is this trailer gets really warm. Really, really warm. And the weather doesn't even have to be that warm outside. So whatever this material is that they made, and, and I, I'll tell you what I'm talking about. It could be like 60 degrees, 65 degrees out, and the sun is out, and it's warm in here. And the same in reverse with the cold. It doesn't even have to be that cold I mean, we've had some chilly mornings, some chilly nights here in Florida, and in like the, the upper 50s and everything, or the 50s. And I remember specifically one night I was sitting in here and the sun had just gone down and I was sitting on the couch looking at uh, my laptop. And I noticed it was a little chilly in here. It was a little uncomfortable in here, you know? And I found myself having to put on a long sleeve shirt. I guess the point I'm making when it comes to hot and cold is not going to take the weather to be extremely cold for it to be cold in here or extremely hot for it to be hot in here is what I'm saying. So it's been in the 80s the past few days and when the sun is out and it's in the 80s, it is warm in here, you know. And yes, I have an air conditioner. And yes, I have a heater. But I, I try to minimize using those things to, you know, help with the longevity of these things continuing to work properly. All right. So I think that's my main thing. Um, I'm really still loving the kitchen. I love, love the kitchen. Um, again with the counter space because I have my Lazy Susan on top of here. Um, I took away a lot of my prep space for on the countertop. I'm still loving the stove, of course. I love the sink. I love having on-demand hot water in here. I'm loving, loving still the shower. I took a shower this morning. I love that about it. The space overall, I really, really love the space overall in here. I feel like I have ample enough space to cook, ample enough space to walk, ample enough space to stand up, and I like it. Now, what I am and can kick my little self in the behind is when I purchased this particular floor plan, I did not know that they had another floor plan. And that floor pl plan, uh, I'll describe it to you. It has a dinette set that stays up. That's in the middle. The kitchen is pretty much the same. Uh, <clears throat> I think the uh, stove is where the sink is because the stove was against by the wall, as I remember. and. Get this, this is what I love about it. The bathroom is a dry bath. A dry bath is the toilet is separated from the shower. So the toilet was on is on one side and the shower stands alone on the other side of the trailer. I love that, I love that. And it has a always stay up bed on the opposite side of that trailer just like this one here if you want to take a look at it it's the rove light 16 rb the rove light 16 rb for rear bath and i gotta tell y'all it's taking every bit of me every bit of me not to trade this in and get that floor plan one i'm telling you i'm holding back i'm holding back because the reason why now the only thing that I would lose is that back counter all those those three things that I have there I would have to find a place for those but it has so much more storage and 
the air conditioner is on the roof so they have like three three storage cabinets up here and then where it's two here they have i think three or four going this way and then they have this long cabinet Woo! that you can open up with a bottom one as well oh my gosh every time i look at a walkthrough of that floor plan i'm just like Woo! anthony 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 come on now come on come on but it is so much the floor plan is excellent i love the floor plan and and when i spoke about the couch that has uh, it has the two dining chairs i can sit on that on a dining chair have the laptop it has the table in between the chairs i can put my laptop on the table and sit up properly <laughs> at a table <laughs> rather than this couch so i don't know guys oh my gosh oh my gosh every time i look at that walkthrough video i'm just like dang on anthony this is the one that you should have gotten and then the door look get this they got a door to close to separate the bathroom they have a door to close to separate the bed <laughs> not that i need it i mean oh my goodness i was like uh 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 and I, I'm thinking, I told the Dalfo, don't be surprised if I, before I head up to uh, North in the, in the May, that that I trade this one in. And don't you be surprised neither, because <laughs> I just got to stop thinking about it. Stop, no, Anthony, you can't do it. You can't do it. But anywho, if you want to check that one out, like I said, it's the Rove Light R, uh, 16RB. All right, I think that's about it. Um, There is some small little imperfections but i'm not gonna uh, nitpick and go into those things all right guys now the last thing i want to share with you guys are some of the things that i must have living this lifestyle so let me reposition you guys and we'll talk a little bit about those things all right, FOAs, the first thing that I absolutely cannot do without living this lifestyle is my ice maker. I love, love, love having an ice maker. May not be this particular brand, but an ice maker. Having an ice maker, it just frees up so much space to allow me to put so much more food in both my refrigerator and the trailer and my refrigerator and my minivan. Because now that I am staying at these campgrounds for a much, much longer period of time, I can focus on having more food in those uh, two refrigerators and I don't have to go off the campground uh, a lot or too much or as much to restock on food because I don't have to use the space of either refrigerator to put cold drinks in. I can go and buy a case of water or a case of this or a case of that and put my ice in a cup and and just you know drink from that so i missed this ice ma ice maker when i left it back in pa in my storage i said i will never ever leave it again so the ice maker is the first thing that i really really need to have with me the next thing guys is right next to the ice maker and it is this microwave it has been a very, very long time since I was able to have a microwave with me. I had it in my minivan at one point, but I couldn't find the proper place to keep it while I was driving without it falling over or this, that, and the other. So I ended up not taking it with me and putting it back in storage. But now that I have this nice counter space, I tell you, I have really, really enjoyed having this microwave here not only because i mean okay i'm losing my words i must be getting really excited because it is so convenient to take some food out the refrigerator after you know some leftovers and put in here and heat it up and not have to use a, a, a pot or frying pan to heat up some food 
I mean, it's just a huge convenience to, to be able to make some popcorn without making it the traditional way or the old school way of making it in a pot on top of the stove and just throwing a bag of popcorn in here. I mean, it just makes things a lot more convenient. And I, now that I have had this in here for a little bit now, I cannot see myself not having this microwave in here. All right, the next two things, guys, are this ceramic heater, and I also have a fan that is about this size as well, but that's up in my storage unit on top of the minivan. I think it is a, such a good idea to have want these things as a backup remember when my furnace wasn't working it was during those chilly night days and i forgot that i had this with me and then adolfo was like don't you have your ceramic heater and i was like oh shoot yeah so i think these make for good uh backups also using a fan and or a heater it allows you to save on your propane uh you know you don't want to run your 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 house heater all night and this is not a big space and this usually does the trick and and keeping this uh, trailer warm throughout those little chilly nights not cold nights but chilly nights and also i can see myself when it does get warmer here and i don't want to run the air conditioner all day to just open up my windows and put my fan on top of the counter and use that to give a little bit of comfort in here. So I think it's a great idea, even if you have air and even if you have heat in your unit, to at least have a backup just in case one of those malfunction. So I'm glad that I have these with me. The next thing guys, I cannot see myself doing without living this lifestyle is my Jackery 2000. This is a necessity for me because I have my refrigerator in the back and that is primarily what the Jackery uh, is for to keep my uh, van, my minivan refrigerator going and I can't see myself without it because I can't see myself not needing or using that refrigerator in the back. It's nice to have. I mean, it's, it, it goes about four days before I have to recharge it again. And get this guys, my uh, Blue Eddy doesn't charge anymore. I've tried it in the outside plug, the indoor plug, and it is dead and it will not, it will just not charge. I don't know what's going on with it. I'm over it. The only reason that I use that Blue Eddy is when the jackery goes down and i have to unplug the refrigerator to charge up this jackery um, i usually plug the refrigerator into the blue eddy while this is being charged up but i figured you know what the fridge will be fine it's still cold inside for 30 minutes without it being plugged up while the jackery is being charged up but definitely 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 cannot see myself living this lifestyle without having this Jackery 2000 or some type of power station. Now that I primarily use the Jackery just for my refrigerator, uh, I probably don't need a huge thing like this. Well, maybe I do because like I said, this usually when it's charged up at 100% goes like three, no, about four days, sometimes five days, depending on what the weather is like out, outdoors. So the Jackery is definitely something that I cannot do without. The next thing, and I know you guys are gonna be like, are you serious, Anthony? Yes, I'm serious. The next thing is my minivan, my minivan uh, kit in general. And I'm gonna tell you why this is still a relevant thing. I know I said that my purpose, main purpose of my minivan now is to just pull my trailer, but I'm gonna tell you why the inside of my minivan is still relevant. The campground that I'm at now, there are two other campgrounds that are close by. One is four hours away, not so close, but not so far. Four hours away, and then the other campground that's an hour and a half away. I can easily 
take my minivan if i want to change the scenery if i want to go to a different campground i can leave this campground take just my minivan with me and stay in the tent section in either one of those campgrounds which is much less than staying at an rv site and i can sleep in my minivan i mean hey i've done it for a minute uh it certainly wouldn't be an issue to do it for, I don't know, two or three nights just to, uh, for a change of scenery at this campground. And I am actually considering going to the campground that's an hour and a half away because I have a camping buddy there and he's been there for three weeks and he's leaving on this upcoming Tuesday. And I thought, well, maybe I'll go there on Sunday and Monday and hang out with him and just take my minivan. It's going to depend on what the weather is like because guess what? I didn't even bring my side panels. Y'all know my side panels, my road, my road uh, side panels that I put up. You know, I can zip and unzip in it and still have the window down. I don't know why I did not bring those. Maybe I thought that I was not going to go to a different campground when I'm at another campground. I don't know, but and especially with the bugs, I'm thinking, okay, I. I would have to crack the windows to get some kind of ventilation. I mean, I, of course, I'll have my fan with me. But anywho, this, having this is still very relevant. I might not use it often, but it's still great to have it as an option when I'm in a situation like this, when there are other campgrounds nearby and I want to just go to a different campground for a different change of scenery or maybe the other campground is having a really good uh, theme weekend that I want to go and be a part of I can easily do it with my minivan all right let's go back inside for the last thing all right guys the last thing that I can think about that I cannot see myself doing without living this lifestyle is this big bed oh my gosh look at this bed this bed is amazing i love this bed i love the space of this bed it's just ah oh, what is this water on my bed what is that oh i know where that came from i had my um lid to my frying pan sitting on my bed is this bed i absolutely love this bed i've never i haven't told you guys or given you guys a, re, a review of the thick mattress that i have on this bed this bed is amazing it is enough space for two maybe three who knows <laughs> but it is so comfortable when i'm in this bed laying down I feel like I have all the space in the world. I can stretch out, I can change positions, I can roll over, I can do whatever I like in this bed because it has so much space. This is amazing. And now that I have experienced this size bed and this type of comfort, I don't see myself ever reverting back to a smaller bed. Now that other floor plan, the uh, Rove Light 16 RB, it looks like the bed is slightly smaller, but not too much smaller. And I was, I'm wondering, you know, would this mattress fit it, this mattress fit in there? But who knows? But yes, love, love, love this bed. I, I just don't see myself going back to anything much smaller than this bed that I have here. All right, guys, that is it for today's video. I covered a lot. I shared a lot with you guys. I hope that you guys enjoyed today's video. It is March. I cannot believe that we are in the third month of this year already. It seems like I was just in Dubai in January. And here we are going into March. Uh, another little note I want to uh, share with you guys is that I am almost reserved for my campgrounds for the entire year. I think that I have a week at the end of July to cover. And I also have um, September, October, and November to cover. I do know in October, I'm either going to be back at this campground because it's only about 
two hours to Miami from this campground, or I'm going to be at the campground that's an hour and a half up the road, which will make my trip to Miami about three and a half hours. Um, the reason I would choose that one over this one is the cost. That one that's an hour and a half away is uh, a couple hundred dollars less than this one. But I'm thinking, oh, do I really want to drive three and a half hours the day that, you know, I'm supposed to be at the hotel? Speaking of the cruise, <laughs> please, if you have not considered going on the cruise, I know I have not spoken about the cruise in a minute now, um, but the cruise is definitely still in effect. Uh, we still have over 70 rooms booked. We still have 70 rooms booked at the hotel for those of you who are going on the cruise and are coming in the day before. I think that I'm going to get there maybe two or three days before everyone else just to, to have a couple of days to go around Miami. I've only been in Miami once and that was just to go on the cruise with Lamont uh, last year. So I haven't really looked around Miami. So I figured that this would be a perfect time for me to spend a couple of days before everyone else gets there and check out Miami and everything. I'm still, still so super, super excited about this cruise. And uh, if you guys are interested, please check out. I will leave the information, the registration form, uh, the flyer in the description. And I already forgot that picture that I was supposed to put up. <laughs> I told y'all, I already forgot. I already forgot because I said I'm going to put that picture up here. But then I said, y'all know me. Hopefully when I'm out, I go back and look at this video before I post it, I will see what I'm supposed to put up there. But anyway, yeah, let's come on. Let's get some more people, uh, some more FOAs to go on this cruise. Um, it's going to be a great FOA uh, meet and greet at the hotel. Uh, we were not able to get the... Uh, conference room at, on the ship which is what I wanted but just the same we are going to have a conference space at the hotel where we're going to have an amazing meet and greet um, we're going to pass out some t-shirts we're going to have some food and it's just going to be really really a great start to the FOA cruise the next day so please consider going on the cruise. Um, it's going to be an amazing time. I can tell you that. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. As always, thanks for taking a few minutes out of your day to watch my videos. I appreciate you guys. You know that. And I'll see you guys the next time.